<laughs> All right, so uh, so this is what takes, but what are we tasting today? Uh, we're tasting, the first one we're going to do is uh, a Heron Hill. Uh, they're on the west side of Cuca Lake. It's okay. that small lake. Cuca Lake, yep. Shape. Just there earlier this week. Uh, I was very close to you. I almost thought we were in a very busy schedule. Yeah, but. the 5 and 20, that's a busy schedule. I, it, what? I w <laughs> we, were, we work hard the entire time. We did the Jello Museum. <laughs> I know. It, was, yeah, it was a blast. It's a great part of the state. Okay, so uh, they're going to pour. This is how much they're going to pour, right? Yeah, so actually, I, I probably was a little generous on the pour. Because um, we're friends. Because we're friends. <laughs> and cheers. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Um, uh, nice. Typically, you would get a one ounce pouring uh, okay. in your glass. Um, we are using uh, really nice stemware. This the stemware is called Riedel. Okay. Um, and these are actually special Riesling glasses that were chosen specifically for Finger Lakes Riesling. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, All right. So the first thing we do is look for what? Uh, first thing we're going to look at is the color. You can tell a lot about a wine by its color. Okay. Um, with rosés, you're you're looking for uh, a soft pink salmon color. Okay. Um, with whites, you're really looking for clarity. So we tell people it's a lot like buying diamonds. Mm -hmm. You're looking at color, clarity, cut, cut, <laughs> brilliance. Yeah, brilliance. Um, uh, so as long as the wine is clear, uh, you don't want to see any floaties or hazes. Okay. If the wine is hazy, this is a good travel tip when you're tr when you're visiting wine country in the summer. Uh, don't keep your wine in your trunk. That's um, bad. That's bad. Yeah, that's bad for um, it. And if your wine has gotten too height, uh, too height, too hot, the wine will start to get cloudy. Okay. So. And can you recover from that, or no, there's mm, no recovery done. from that? Okay. Pour it down the drain. All right. <laughs> oh, you're not playing around. Okay. So. Um, hold the wine by the stem. Okay. Um, that's why a wine glass is shaped the way it is, because okay. if you take your warm uh, hand and hold it, yeah. Mm, no, no good. Okay, that's not good. Uh, hold it by the stem, and you want to twirl the glass. How do you do You do, The way you do it is much prettier than me. Well, I'm slopping it all bit. over the place. Well, there you go. Once you get it, it's like a... A hula hoop. Yeah, oh. <laughs> We're going to do that next, right after the break. We're very excited. Where's the hula hoop yeah, museum? Well, yeah, right. I don't know. Um, what you're doing is releasing the aromatics of the wine. Okay. Um, so this is a tip you can actually take when you go to restaurants and you order wine by the bottle and the sommelier or the, or the wine steward comes out and presents the wine at the table. Yep. More often than not, the wine will be presented to the person who ordered, ordered the it. wine okay. and usually that's the man. Okay. Um, I hate to admit. Okay. Um, but you, you assess the quality of the wine through the nose, mm -hmm. not the taste. Really? So in a restaurant, you would be twirling smelling and if it smells good then then the wine itself will be good how will you know if it smells bad uh, before you get to taste I mean I, I know it's kind of a vague question but will you know I mean will yes. you, you, you'll know um, what you're looking for uh, in the in the nose are off smells like wet cardboard wet newspaper um, that's wow. that's a, a characteristic that forms in the wine when when you have a, a natural cork that's contaminated the wine. Mm -hmm. That's called corked. Okay. It's a subtle characteristic that does take time to notice. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing you're looking for. You're also looking for premature oxidation. Okay. Usually with oxidation, you'll see it in the color, but in the nose, um, it can be the the start of. Um, nail polish remover smell. It'd, okay. be, it'd be really off. It, it, okay, we would definitely notice yeah. it. Okay. Now the other smell that many people find to be a fault that oftentimes is not a fault are barnyard smells. So in older burgundies uh, and older pinot noirs uh, it starts to smell like cow dung, um, aged You're kidding manure. Me, right? no, mm -mm. Why would you, does it taste great? Oh, it tastes great. But it's a, it's, it's a smell that uh, it, takes a t it takes a while to figure out that that's a good thing. Okay. So. All right. I'm going to take you to, you are the expert for heaven's sake. But so. since we're having a rosé made from Cabernet Franc, yeah. uh, we, we don't expect to find any barnyard smells. And we hope not to, not to get any uh, paint. Uh, uh, paint thinner? Yeah, paint taste. thinner or nail polish remover. Okay. And then, and then what after that? Then after that, you can go ahead and take a sample. Okay. And you make it sound so clinical. We're going to take a sample. Look out. Uh, and okay. when you do take a sample, Is that too early? Uh, okay. pull the wine, let the wine sit on your tongue. Okay. Don't swallow it. Okay. Don't Just let it hang out there. Let it hang out. And at the same time, you want to open up your, your mouth a little bit. Okay. And try and suck in some air. And that will open up the flavors of the wine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a great tip. Mm. I d it actually worked. Mm -hmm. Then if we did have sp spit buckets, and, mo and all tasting rooms have those buckets. Yeah. And 99% of the people have no idea what they're for. Yeah. And 100% of those 99% would never spit out. 
Right. Um, because there's a, a feeling of intimidation that you think it's kind of gross. No, but it's not. You're supposed to spit it out yeah. and pour it out. Right. If yes. you're reusing your glass. Right. So if we we're moving on to the next sample, we would be pouring it out. All right. So. What else did you bring before we go? Um, we have to go. I we have to go. Yeah. Okay. Soon. But so um, what else did you bring? Can we taste some more? Or do we yeah, have to go? Yeah. 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 Okay. Do we have more glass? Should we finish this? Uh, or do we have new glasses? You know, well, we better down the. Plate. We can oh, down. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. Don't do that in the tasting room, only on the program. Mm. All right, what else did you bring? Oh, that's um, delicious. Well, I, the just, rose? I do that all the time. I break corks in half. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. So this next wine we're having is a Riesling. I love Riesling. Oh, me too. I do too. It's, it's my favorite. And this is from a winery on the east side of Seneca Lake. So now we're moving east from Cuca. Okay. And you were talking earlier about the differences among the lakes. And Seneca Lake is the largest lake in the Finger Lakes. Okay. So it creates a climate that's warmer than anywhere else in the Finger Lakes. Mm -hmm. And this particular location is called the Banana Belt. Oh, okay. Not because bananas are grown. <laughs> It's just called a banana belt. Because <laughs> it's the warmest part of the Finger Lakes. And oh. so the wines from this area are going to be riper in, uh, in fruit flavors. Mm -hmm. Lots of peach and melon okay. uh, is common for east side. Now, uh, somebody said you shouldn't take a giant whiff of this, that that's actually bad. You're supposed to take, like, like three small little yeah. whiffs. Does it matter? I mean... I don't remember who told me that. I don't know if it's, but it doesn't really matter. Does it matter? I don't know. What um, do you smell? I mean, you want to do the twirl. Yeah, um, open you, it up. Yep, and hold hold the glass at about a 45 degree angle. Okay. Um, I have a nice big nose, God bless me, with a good. That'd be me, <laughs> yeah, I got, yeah. Um, club. And you want to do the, the twirl uh, and sniff about three times. Okay. And you, again, you can tell a lot about the wine, not only whether it's good or not, but what you expect it to taste like. Will it list the ingredients of what was used to make this wine on the label? For instance, will it say, because I smell peach and rosemary and strawberries, and will it say peach, rosemary, strawberry? I don't know. I mean, I'm just asking. Well, for the novice winemaker, I think that's a common question, is where do those fruit flavors come from? Yeah. And those fruit, fruit flavors come from the grapes themselves. Yes. So there's no additional fruit essence added to these wines. Okay. You know, when you're looking at wine beverages, Wine um, product, wine per product, se. Wine product, yes. Um. We've all been there, Morgan. <laughs> 3.30 in the morning, we need the wine product. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, there is uh, labeling that will be changing in the U.S. that will start to add uh, ingredients. Oh, wow. Used during the manufacturing process of wine, but right now, uh, those those aren't added. Okay. So this is a uh, Riesling, right? This is a Riesling. Riesling yeah. is a, a German varietal. Um, Rieslings range in sweetness of s sweet to dry. Yeah. So a lot of people think, oh, Riesling, Blue Nun, that's really sweet, yuck. Yeah. No. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Yeah, Riesling, Most of the time it's not. And Riesling is the best food pairing wine. Uh, oh. And that's because it's, it's lighter in style. Uh, they have lots of acidity, and acidity is what makes food come uh, together with wine. Oh. So. I, think I want to do that air thing. I'm going to try that. Yes, because last time I didn't hear hear much. I, well, I wasn't very good at it. I, <laughs> I didn't hear much. <laughs> and the first time you're doing that, you want to make sure you do have a dark shirt on. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I did a South mm -hmm. African red wine tasting mm -hmm. in a white shirt. Mm. Yeah, it was not good. Mm. 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 It does work. Now. John, yes. since you're having so much fun, yes, sir. why don't you try it real quick before we go? Because we've only got about 30 yeah. seconds. Yeah, come on over. Yeah, yeah. now would be the you time. Yeah, hurry up, because we've got a two-hour two program here. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Now, again, it's oh, here. Oh, you got your own glass. Oh, look at this. The service in this restaurant is magnificent. I love it. So this is my section, but I'll see what I can do. <laughs> oh, you got a good and twirl? We can't see. I mean, I want to see you. I, I step over here yeah, to your left a little bit. Yeah. yeah, that way we'd like to actually see you participate in this. <laughs> That's nice. That's a nice blue sticker you got on your shirt. Good job. <laughs> we have the best looking crew. Okay, now it's, yeah, all right. Let's hear the, let's hear the, uh, careful everyone. Shh. No, not, not now. It's after. Now let's hear it. Mm. <laughs> Wow. You've done that. Makes a, a difference, times. doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. I knew it. I knew it. You made a believer out of me. Thanks, Morgan. Cheers. Thanks, John. Thank you. All right. What's the website? Uh, the website is fingerlakeswinecountry.com. Right. Uh, and like you, we have a couple Twitter feeds. Love that. Where people can kind of get behind the scenes of where we are traveling and. Cool. Yeah. I like it. Will you come back and do this again sometime? Sure. I would love this. I love it. Thank you. We will continue here uh, on the Big Travel Show in a matter of moments. We're headed up to Toronto 
Uh, and then I, love Toronto. I, <laughs> I do too. That's why we're going there. We will do that next. You're on Travel Show Live. Stay with us. <laughs>